Our next section is called the chain rule. Um, this is one of our major concepts for, besides just the derivative, but for using the derivatives, the chain rule comes into play a lot. Let's say that um, the amount I make depends on hours worked. So um, my pay depends, the change of my pay depends on the number of hours I worked. Except not horse hours, okay? The hours I work depends on my happiness. So my hours worked, the change in my amount I work depends on happiness. I'm going to write the word happy. So I could also say that my pay depends on my happiness, and we would make that relationship, the change in my pay or happiness is equal to the change of my pay times my hours times the change of my work over my happiness. And we have not thought about what we do dy over dx as, hey, that represents the derivative. We have not actually thought of this as a fraction. This is the first time that you can actually see that I can kind of um, see things as fractions. The um, except I'm not supposed to put work here. This is supposed to be hours. Because notice these hours cancel, so I actually get the pay over happiness. That is the one of the forms of the chain rule that I can use. Okay, and I'll write the two different versions of the chain rule, then I'm going to explain how we actually do calculus problems. So version one, dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. And you're going to see how we can use this uh, when I do some example problems. The second version is the way I see it a lot. I write this two different ways. The derivative with respect to x of f of g of x is equal to the derivative of f of g of x times the derivative of g of x, okay? I am going to call this thing my inside function. And I'm going to call this part my outside function. What I'm going to do is this says, take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x put parentheses. 
one derivative of outside function I'm going to call that except where x put parentheses Step two, put the inside function into the parentheses. And then step three, we are going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Multiply. by derivative of the inside function. Go ahead and uh, that in blue. And that's how I use the chain rule. I am going to um, do several examples using both versions of the chain rule. So, um, actually, I'll do the second version first. Um, example A, I want to do 6x cubed plus 3x plus one to the 10th. Right now, the only way you have to do it without the chain rule is to actually use the, multiply this thing by itself 10 times and then use the power rule, which you definitely don't want to do. That would be like a week long project. But using the chain rule, I need to know what my inside function is. Six X cubed plus three X plus one. My outside function is something to the 10th power. So the answer to the derivative of this equation is take the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of X to the 10th, um, I'm going to call, this is my F, my, this is my G, so F prime of X, derivative of that is 10 X to the ninth, um, G prime of X is 18 X squared plus 3. I'm going to put this all together. I want to do F prime of G times G prime. So F prime of G, 10 parentheses, the ninth. Um, then copy the inside function, 6X cubed plus 3X plus 1 times the derivative of the outside function, times, open parentheses, 18x squared plus 3. And I would not have you multiply this out to simplify it at all. Um, The book, when they did the example, they pulled a three out of both of these terms and brought it out in front. I'm not going to make you do that on any um, homework quizzes or tests. So the hard part of this is identifying the inside function and identifying the outside function.
So the next example I'm going to do is example C that I believe is on page 187. Because this not only involves the chain rule, but it involves uh, other work that we've already done. So it says 5t squared over 3t squared plus 2. So my outside function, I'm going to call it f, is something squared. Okay, my f prime is 2x. My inside function is what I'm going to call my g of x. That is the 5t squared over 3t squared plus 2. Its derivative is a quotient rule problem. So remember, quotient rule is low d high minus high d low over the denominator squared. So it is low 3t squared plus 2. Derivative of the high, which would be 10t, minus high, which is 5t squared, times the derivative of the low, which is going to be 6t, all over the denominator squared, which is 3t squared plus 2 quantity squared. You can clean the top up. I end up with 30t cubed plus 20t minus 30t cubed all over the denominator squared, 3t squared plus 2 squared. The 30t's cancel, and I'm left with 20t over 3t squared plus 2 quantity squared. Now I'm going to put this together. Um, I want f prime of g times g prime. Take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, Put the inside function. I put the g in there. 5t squared over 3t squared plus 2 times the derivative of the inside function times 20t over 3t squared plus 2 squared. And now I can do a little bit of simplification here. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 20 is 200. t squared times t is t cubed. 3t squared plus 2 times 3t squared plus 2 squared is 3t squared plus 2 quantity cubed. And I am done. The implication for this is we now have the new improved power rule on steroids. And what that tells us, the derivative of g to the x, that an inside function raised to a power, I can do the power rule on that power. 
So that's going to be n to the g of x to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside function. Okay. Basically, I'm allowed to do the power rule, uh, which basically use the chain rule for powers. The example they give you for that is they want the derivative of tangent x plus 10 raised to the 21st power. What that says is, hey, just do the power rule like I normally would. It would be 21 times whatever I took the power of. Subtract 1 from the exponent times the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x plus the derivative of 10 is 0. So this would be the final answer there. Um, so now I'm, that's the lecture for um, both parts of the homework. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some example problems that are similar to your homework problems. So for your homework 13, you are doing um, 3.7 problems 8, 12, um, 18, 20, and 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do problems like those. I'm going to do seven first. And that is y equals 3x plus 7 to the 10th. Um, the work I did on the previous examples, I showed you the full blown out what you would, could write to show everything. Um, I'm going to show you how I would do this problem. And then I'm going to do it a second time showing each step that you may be something you want to do. So I want to figure out what y prime is. I can just do the power rule on that inside function. I'm going to do 10 times that function to the ninth times the derivative of the inside function, which is 3. That would give me 30 times 3x plus 7 to the 9th. Now, you can identify your outside function, um, which is, I'm going to call that my f of x. My outside function is something to the 10th. My f prime of x is 10x to the 9th. My inside function, the thing we were calling g of x, is 3x plus 7. So my g prime of x is 3. And I can put those two things together. I can do f prime of g times g prime. So f prime, I'm going to go 10, open parentheses, close parentheses to the ninth, put the g inside, 3x plus 7, times the g prime, which is times 3, and I'm just going to get the same 30 times 3x plus 7 to the ninth. I, do, I need to see either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. I do not have to see both. Next question I'm going to do is 13. And that is y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. Um, this one looks a little bit different. Um, here, my outside function is the square root of x. Call that f. Um, so f prime is 1 over 2 square root of x. Uh, my inside function is x squared plus 1. So my derivative of the inside function is 2x. 
Now let's put this all together. Take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x put parentheses. So I'm going to put 1 over 2 square root of blah. Inside the parentheses, put the inside of function, x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the inside function, which would be times 2x. The 2's cancel, and I'm left with an x on the top. And the square root of x squared plus 1 on the bottom. I'm going to now do problem 17. It says y is secant. I'm going to put some parentheses that your book doesn't have of e to the x. My outside function, my f is secant of x uh, the derivative of the secant of x our cheat sheet Haven't done that one in quite a while. And again, that's why you guys have the cheat sheet. Uh, secant x tangent x, so f prime is secant x tangent x. My inside function is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So to put this all together for y prime, I do f prime of x, except where there's an x, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, put my inside function, which is e to the x, times the derivative of the inside function, which is just e to the x. I am done. Um, the directions tell you to use version one or version two of the chain rule. Um, I don't care which version you use. I prefer either of those. So that's basically how you go th about doing all of the first part of your homework, which is homework 13. Your homework 14 is problems 38, 40, 46, 58, and 67. Um, 38, you're doing the chain roll using a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 37. I'm going to recreate the table they gave me. So they have 1 through 5. And we have f, f prime, g, and g prime. And they give us the values, 0, 3, 5, 1, 0. And they have 5, 2, negative 5, negative 8, negative 10, g is four, five, one, three, two. G prime, two, 10, 20, 15 and 20. Then this problem has various parts they want us to do. First one, um, they're telling us H is equal to F of G of X, E, 
is equal to g of f of x. The first one they want us to do is they want us to do h prime of 3. So h prime of 3. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function. Except where there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this 3 in for the x's. So I want f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. I'm going to read g of 3 off of the table. And that gives me 1. That's f prime of 1. I'm going to read g prime of 3 off the table. g prime of 3 is 20. I'm now going to read the f prime of 1 off the table, which is 5. It gives me 5 times 20, which is 100. Um, now I'm going to do C. This was A. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm do, now I'm going to do C. C says P prime of 4. P prime of 4. Well, P prime is I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function. So I'm going to get g prime of f of 4 times the derivative of f evaluated at 4. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in that part. So g prime of f of 4. f of 4 is 1. f prime of 4. f prime of 4 is negative 8 g prime of 1 is 2. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. That's how you're going to do your problem 38. Um, your problem 40 is a story problem. Read it carefully. They give you units that you're going to be able to use in order to evaluate that question. Then we have... The next group of problems is the repeated use of the chain rule and combining rules. That means having to use the chain rule more than once. So um, I am going to do, I mean, I want to make sure I'm not doing one. Okay, I got to sign that one, that one. Let's do, I'm going to do 48. Then I assign 54. I'm going to do 48 and 54. So for 48. Um, 48 says y equals sine squared of x. Well, sine squared of e to the 3x plus 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. This is normally, this is the sine of e to the 3x plus 1 quantity squared. That, these both mean the same thing. That squared means it applies to that whole sine function. Let me make that parentheses bigger. Um, so originally, my outside function is sine squared of x. And my inside function is e to the 3x plus 1. So my f prime. Oops, I have another chain rule. So I'm going to call, in this case, h is my outside function. That is x squared. And I'm going to call j my inside function, which I'm going to call the sine of x. Okay, well, that makes my h prime. Derivative of x squared is 2x. My j prime, derivative of sine is cosine of x. So for my f prime, 
I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, put the inside function, so 2 sine of x, times the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of the inside function would be cosine of x. So I now have my original f, and I have my f prime. So my g, my g prime, Again, I have two functions. I have an inside function and an outside function. So my h, my outside function, is e to the x. Um, h prime in this case would be e to the x. My j, my inside function, is 3x plus 1. So my j prime is going to be 3. So my overall g prime of x, derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x put parentheses. I'm going to put parentheses inside the parentheses. I'm going to put the inside function. So it's e to the 3x plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 3. I can now write out the final chain rule. So I'm going to do the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. That's these two. Parentheses, I'm going to put that part. So y prime is 2 times the sine of the inside function, e to the 3x plus 1, times the cosine of the inside function, which is e to the 3x plus 1, times the derivative of the inside function, which would be times 3 times e to the 3x plus 1. Now I can clean this all up. Um, 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to put the, uh, then that, then that, then that. So sine of e to the 3x plus 1, cosine of e to the 3x plus 1 times e to the 3x plus 1. Um, I'm going to let me look at the last homework questions you have. So that's 46. I want to make sure I'm doing stuff that corresponds to the type of questions you have on your homework. Okay, so you have 58 and 67, so I need to do some more, I need to do a combining rules question. So I am going to do 64. That's y equals e to the 2x. times 2x minus 7 to the fifth. So this is a combining rules problem. This is a product rule where that's u times v. So the derivative, it's first function times derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, so my u is equal to e to the 2x. Um, my v is equal to 2x minus 7 to the fifth. My u prime is the derivative of this, when that is an inside function and an outside function. Okay, inside fun outside function is e to the 2x. Actually, my outside function is e to the x. Um, its derivative is just e to the x. The inside function is 2x. Its derivative is 2. So my u prime is the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, put the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. So I get 2e to the 2x. Here, my v prime 
my outside function is x to the fifth. Its derivative is 5x to the fourth. The inside function is 2x minus 7. Its derivative is 2x, uh, is 2, sorry. So my v prime is derivative of the outside function, 5 times the inside function to the fourth, times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2 which would be 10 times 2x minus 7 to the fourth. I do all that intermediate work, and now I can use the product rule. So I'm going to do u to my y prime is equal to u e to the 2x. That's my u. My v prime is 10 times 2x minus 7 to the fourth plus my v which is 2x minus 7 to the fifth and times my u prime 2e to the 2x Um, the way your book is probably going to have its answer is it's going to pull out an e to the 2x, and it's going to pull out four of those out in front. e to the 2x. Um, it's actually going to pull out a 2e to the 2x. So it's going to pull out a 2 out of both of those. I'm going to be left with a... Um, and I'm pulling out 2x to the minus 7 to the 4th. What I'm going to have left over in here is I'm going to have a 5. And I'm going to have just one of these left over. Okay, um, then I have 5. So I'm going to rewrite this. So I have the 5 because 10 divided by the 2 is 5. I take out four of these, I have one of those left over, and I pulled this whole part out. So final simplification would be 2e to the 2x times 2x minus 7 to the fourth times the quantity of 2x minus 2. And again, it probably would have pulled out another 2. Write it as 4 times e to the 2x times 2x minus 7 to the 4th, plot of 2, that's going to give me x minus 1. That's probably the way all of the work would show up on there. Um, on a test, I would probably have you stop right there. So that is the one lecture for two homework assignments. Um, have fun.